So hi y'all. I'm glad you could make it. Look at you. All right. Let me get out of this. So welcome. This is not only the first episode, session, discussion of the Corset Disciplinarian, me. This is also my birthday month. As of the filming of this video, I am a loud and proud, old, brown, and sexy, 67-year-old senior citizen. Oh yeah. And I'm not about to stop corset training, waist training, just because I've reached another milestone. And let me show you why. Look at that. Just look at it. That is, this is 22 inches closed of my corseted, cinched perfection. Now, why should I stop doing that? Just because I am the age that I am. Yes. Age has nothing to do with corseting. So, let's talk about why we are here. We are here to learn about, talk about, or look at corsets. And for me, I talk about corsets of real people, real bodies, wearing real corsets. So don't ask me anything about those elastic waist, waist trainers. Oh, no, no, no. I don't know anything about them. I don't own one. I don't want to own one. And frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Can I say that on YouTube? Well, I said it. Okay, let's talk about why we're here. We are here to either talk about, learn about, or look at corsets. People in corsets. I think that I knew I, I started my first, I wore my first corset in my early 40s in the 90s. So you do the math. There wasn't a lot out there about corsets. People were selling corsets. There were a lot more corseteers at that time, but there wasn't a lot of information. The internet hadn't quite exploded the way it has, it is now. So my corset journey was a lot of trial and error. What we do hear about out there is either about those that are just trying to get the 18 inch waist or go as small as they can, all right? Or we're hearing about those horror stories about corsets. Yeah, well, that's why I started teaching because it was a horror story that visited me about 10 years ago because she had put on a corset at a show. The corset person knew not what they were doing. She still wore it. And to this day, she carries the scar of a serious blood blister that she received. First time ever wearing a corset. I don't want people going through that. We talk to that young lady now. All she has to say is bad things about corsets. And my thing was, if it hurt, why didn't you take it off? And her thing was, well, it wasn't that bad. I, I was really looking good. That is why I started teaching about corsetry, wearing of the corsets. I don't make corsets. Nobody endorses me at this point to talk about their corset in particular. So when I give my opinions about corsets, when I say something about a corseteer or a certain type of style, it's my opinion. And in more than one case, it's also going to be my experience. Because I can tell you, I got a bin full of corsets that I have bought over a two decade period until I found what worked for me until I finally could start my waist training journey because I found a particular corset, particular style that worked for my particular body. So let's talk about bodies. I talk mostly about corsets that are being sold online because let's face it, that's where 90% of people are buying their corsets is online. They never see anybody. And without being totally nasty, most of the people, sellers, manufacturers, distributors, whatever you want to call them, that are selling corsets online, they 
don't know anything about that corset except what it says on the tag inside the product or not even that close. They just know what the distributor or the person they bought it from is telling them about that corset. And I can tell you back in the 90s, I got stiffed a couple of times looking for steel bone and had someone say, oh yeah, this is the bone corset. Okay, that was a couple hundred bucks out of my pocket to get it and find out, oh yeah, it's boned in the front. The rest of it is plastic. And even worse, there's zip ties. Okay, so buyer beware when you're out there looking for a corset. Okay, let's get a little bit more into the nuts and bolts of starting out and trying to get your first corset. Mm -hmm. Buying that first corset which sets you on your journey. Now, for those of you that are brand new, this is important, it really is. For those of you that are seasoned, ah, it's old hat, but even for the years that I have been doing my corset training, seeing what's out there, I learn something new, maybe not every day, but there's somebody out there doing something that all I can say is, wow, that's something you don't see every day. Wow, didn't know that and you just kind of absorb it. You stick it in that file cabinet because there's going to be someone who's going to be come to, coming to me about their training journey. And I'm going to have to pull that out and just say, I heard someone else did something like that. <laughs> so, okay, let's get started. If you're lucky enough to be at a show, and this would be like fandom conventions, um, Victorian events and wherever a vendor is selling corsetry. I don't all do it, but there are going to be some. So when I'm teaching, especially if I'm teaching at a convention where there are corset people selling corsets, I would tell them, go on down to the vendor hall, try the corsets on. If that corset seller is anything worth their weight, they can at least put you in a corset, all right, Say, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, this is what you should wear, da, 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 and go from there. Now, let me tell you, this is very important, and I had to learn this the hard way. And that is, 90% of the courses out there, probably even more than 90%, they're stock made. Even corseteers are buying their materials that are being, they're standardized, okay? So, the bus could be standardized. The grommets in the back will be standardized, okay? It just matters of how many it stacks up. And when I say stack up, this is what I mean. I'm going to stand up and show you my cinch again. So, when you go, I am wearing what I consider to be my short corset. This is the busk. Personally, I prefer corsets that um, attach in the front. You have corsets that zip. I know nothing about them because I don't wear them. Um, you have corsets that go in the back. There is nothing here. This is just my preference. I happen to like having my busk in the front. All right. This busk happens to have four hooks. One, two, three, four. This makes it my shorter one because this is only about ten and a half inches. Now, you will have corsets that will also be maybe a little longer, right? This is another standard bus. You see there are a standard amount of spaces apart. This one has five. This for me is my long corset because it's about 11, maybe 11 and a half inches. And that's as far as I go. All right, once you have that on, let's say that you've got it on, you've got your four, you've got your five, you might have to try a, f a couple more. Now this is what is very important. Once you've got this, you've decided you're gonna wear it. Next thing, you put that corset on, Sit down, okay? I am so tired of people telling me, of seeing students come to my lectures, of pay people paying me to coach them. And the first thing they say is, it hurts in here. I can't sit in a chair. You want to know why? That corset is not for you, all right? What it comes down to is that you should be able to sit down. This corset should not dig into your groin. You start cutting off your circulation in that area down there, you're going to be wearing that discomfort for the rest of your life. 
All right, I came very close to that. And every now and then I get a little shadow that says, oh, you don't want to do that again. All right, sit down. All right, once you sit down, if it starts digging in, which means if it's digging in here, it's coming to a stop. The rest of the corset is going to come up. How many people have you seen? They're like this in a corset, just leaning because I can't sit down in my corset. It's because that corset is not for you, all right? Get out of it. Tell the corset person you're trying or you want to try something different. And count how many hooks there are. If it's too big for you, knock it down a notch. If she puts you in one that's six, then go to five. If five is still just a little uncomfortable, then friggin' go to four. Now, this person doesn't have four. You have just learned what size corset you need to wear. So now you can go online and you can start looking at those pictures of corsets because this is really, of all the sizing in here and in the back, this is the most fucking, oh God, this is the most frigging important. <laughs> I probably banned this video, uh, okay. <laughs> but that is how you size your corset. If you can get to one, and so for those that are buying online, you can't get to a corset. Yes, I would say measure. There are people out there that will say, okay, send us your measurements. <laughs> yeah, let's just talk about that. Oh, yeah. Send us your measurements. You know, they'll want this measurement, that measurement, this measurement, you know, this measurement, that measurement. Okay. In buyer beware. <laughs> I have two courses where I got done like that because, oh yeah, I took all those measurements and it's hard to measure yourself because you know, I don't have anybody else here. You know, not, none of my slaves are working every day, okay? <laughs> so I sent it in and, oh, I'm thinking it was a great pattern. It was a nice little style I was going to try for. And I get that corset. I unbox that corset. Ooh, 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 I'm getting ready to put it on. And just for some reason, you know, I check the tag so that I can see, well, I said 22 inches, all right? Well, the first thing that I saw on the tag was extra large. That was it. All that measurement, all that money. And this person sent me a stock corset. Okay. Mommy's not happy. Anyhow, <laughs> stop. Buyer, beware. Think about that. And that's why there are certain corseteers out there, or corset manufacturers who have been around a long time, and they have even modified their lines because a lot of courses out there are not really meant for the human form. They're not meant for a human body, but people are wearing them. So before I close up, because I didn't want this to be a very long video, okay, the other thing that you want to say about corsetry. Never have anyone put a corset on you or you put it on yourself first time out the gate, first time out the box, out the bag, and expect to pull it to its full max. Never. It's not good for you and it sure as hell is not good for the corset because it hasn't learned your body. Tight lacing and waist training. There's a lot of learning about your body between you and your corset companion, which is what I like to call the courses that you wind up seasoning to your body. It becomes your companion. It becomes a part of you. So when you're going to go out there, tight lace, waist train. My number one is make sure the corset fits. Now, there are other measurements that I haven't talked about yet, like, you know, the sides, the short corsets, the da-da-da. That can be discussed later, but um, let's be safe out there. There's enough bad information. There's enough misinformation, and a lot of it coming from people who have never won a goddamn corset, let me tell you. So, be safe out there. There's information to be had. You just have to, you know, sort through it. Don't take it at face value. Find out what works for you. That's why I am a corset disciplinarian. 
This is a wonderful art form. I enjoy it. Even though this is also my birthday month, and I thought I'd be wearing a birthday corset while I was doing this, but that didn't happen. But that's all right. You can't go wrong with leopard. So, until next time, keep those laces tight. <laughs>